Hi, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and I'm going to be continuing my uh, beginner series that I'm putting out recently. And this is a game from 1862 between Wilhelm Steinitz, who went on to become the first undisputed world chess champion uh, a, few move, a, a few years later, 1886 to 1894. And with the black pieces, he was playing Augustus Mongredian, who was an English master in the 19th century, although he was not really a world-class player. And so this is a nice game because Steinitz shows what happens if your opponent plays a, a couple of inaccurate moves in the opening and how to really pounce on it and punish them. So e4 and d5. So this is called the Scandinavian, and white uh, usually takes the pawn and when queen takes, and now knight c3. So white is able to gain a, a free developing move with the continuation. Mongredian chooses queen d8. And other tries are queen, uh, in this position, queen to a5. And also queen to d6 can be seen. And the Scandinavian is not very... It's, it's, it's definitely unusual to see this played at the top level because, you know, as you can see, it, it kind of gives white a free move. And so after e6... Um, why, you know, Steinitz is, is just kind of developing and trying to take control of the four central squares, you know, developing his pieces, control the center, and then start, you know, trying to create threats. So bishop d3, um, you know, it's going to be I and, I and black's king side a little bit later. And so both sides castle. Bishop e3, um, not a bad move. Bishop, bishop to g5 or bishop to f4 was also possible. And so now with b6, black is going to develop this bishop and exert a little bit of pressure on the center on the light squares. The downside to black's plan is that he's, uh, he's taking a little bit too much time and his king side could become a weakness in the future. So with knight e5, white hops his knight in and now if black answered with knight d7, white would have a nice, uh, a very solid knight on c6. So instead, black plays bishop b7 to guard that, uh, that c6 square. And so now f4. So that was the real idea also behind the immediate knight e5 was to go ahead and play f4 and uh, really strengthen that knight in that square. So now knight d7. And so queen e2. So white is really kind of, um, queen e2 is kind of a waiting move. You know, he also wants to get the rook to d1 so it can oppose black's queen there. So queen e2 makes sense. So here, black played knight to d5, and after takes and pawn takes, this bishop is really shut out of the game. So instead of knight d5, he should have played c5, immediately trying to put pressure on white center and trying to open the position up. And so after a move like c5, um, you know, something like this could continue, maybe bishop takes c5. Or knight takes c5 is just fine as well, you know, trying to put pressure and win that, that light square bishop. So this position would be totally fine for black. No problem at all to play this, but, uh, you know, opening the center up and, and maybe he can even try to attack along, along the diagonals towards white's king. So c5 here again, that was the move. So instead, Mongredian plays knight to d5, and I don't really know what the, the foundation for this plan was because... After knight takes d5 and pawn takes d5, the bishop is totally shut out of the game by its own pawn. Um, so, you know, first of all, and also it's giving white another move. So black, black spin a move to close his own bishop's diagonal. So now with the move rook f3, if black tries to continue with c5, maybe trying to think of c4, white can win the game immediately with bishop takes h7, king takes, rook check, king back and queen to h5 and that's going to be a made in one however you look at it no way out so c5 there does not work so Mongredian played f5 so if he had continued with a move like g6 white can um really just try to blow it up you know with the immediate f5 here that's that's going to be very dangerous for black so instead black played f5 and um you know his problem is that he can't play knight to f6. If he could just jump the knight to e4, he'd be fine. But why can take this f5 pawn? And then, you know, black is really in a world of pain. So instead, he plays g6. So he, he wants to play knight 
you know, plays g6 to reinforce that f5 pawn. He wants to play the knight to f6 and the knight to e4. And then he wouldn't be doing so bad, but his position is just too frail. So Steinitz immediately acts to punish Black's, Black's opening. You know, he played knight to d5 instead of c5. He just wasn't, there was no plan. There was no clear plan that he was following. And so with g4, Steinitz, you know, he also doesn't have to worry about this bishop coming to attack his king because the pawn on d5 is shutting it down. So with move g4, White's really trying to blow it up. And so Mongridian takes, um, tough to recommend another move. So now Steinitz sacks a rook. Rook takes h7. And the reason he can do this is because the bishop on b7 is essentially worthless. And the rook on a, it's not going to do anything to defend against White's attack either. So instead of, uh, Mongridian plays a nice move. He plays knight takes e5 instead of immediately taking on, on h7. So he wants to trade off one of White's attacking pieces. So White plays f takes to open up this f file to attack with. And now black takes the rook. So in this position, White is uh he's got one pawn for the sacrificed rook but the problem is um like i was saying you know that rook that black is up is is you know stuck way on a8 it's not helping out on the defense and so now after rook g8 trying to defend against the obvious mate um white plays check another check a, a little series of checks uh, worth pointing out here after rook g8 in this position, if white takes on g6, he loses the queen to king h8. So that's that's not going to work out too well. So uh, instead, you know, he keeps throwing checks at his king, at, at black's king. And it's not like he's just trying to waste time. He was trying to seize this diagonal so that black couldn't run to to c8 and, and get out of there. And so now he brings the last piece into the attack with rook f1. And so now it's kind of a little quiet. So now queen to e6. So Steinitz is creating pressure with every move. Every move he's trying to introduce new threats. And it's very tough to defend against that. So now rook g7, um, as the immediate rook f8 would have just lost immediately to uh, bishop takes g6. So rook g7. And now a nice move. Bishop takes g6 here would have worked. Although... After takes, takes, check. Um, now the king is running. Queen to g4. Maybe black's going to get out of this and, and escape to an endgame. You know, in something like this, black is just taking a little walk with the king. He's going he's gonna to make it out. So instead, Steinitz plays bishop to g5. So a very important move, you know. Um, you know, you never, you don't, you don't have to play the checks immediately when you're attacking. It's better to maintain the tension and build the pressure before exchanging off pieces while you're attacking. And so um, there's you know, some old saying about passers always give checks. Um, exactly. So bishop to g5, just building the pressure and, and putting the last piece in the attack. And so now after queen d7, here's the point. Bishop takes, rook takes, and now white just rook to f8 check, and it's all over because the bishop's got, got the pin against the black king. And so with queen takes e8 check, uh, that's, that's mate. So that's all she wrote. So a very nice attacking game by Wilhelm Steinitz. And um, it just goes to show, you know, if, if your opponent makes, you know, what seems to be a dubious move or he's got a, a dubious, you know, some kind of questionable formation with his pieces, um, you know, you should always try to punish it immediately, even if that means sacrificing material. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and thanks for tuning in. Thank you.